Hello everybody. In this video, I will show you how to edit the enemies and objects in overworld areas, as well as use the Piclopedia areas that are already in the game's files. First, you open your route, navigate to user, ABE, map. These are the folders that have the generation files for the areas in them. Forest is the Awakening Wood. Last is the Wistful Wild. New Test is the Test Map. Tutorial is the Valley of Repose. Yakushima is the Perplexing Pool. And Zukon has its own set of folders that pertain to the Piclopedia areas. These names are the same throughout the game's files, so it's easy to keep track of them. For the sake of this tutorial, I will be editing the Valley of Repose. So let's click on Tutorial. Here are the text files for editing overworld entities. First though, if you want to use the Piclopedia areas instead of the normal ones, navigate to User, Kando, Map, Zukon. And these are your Piclopedia areas. To replace them, copy the arc.scs and text.scs from the folder of your choice. In this case, I'll do Tutorial. Then go back to the map folder and paste them into the folder of the area you want to replace. You can also view these areas by dragging the arc.scs file into Lunaboy's RARC tools or arc extract and we'll extract it to this folder. And then opening this file with J3D model viewer. And as you can see, this is the Piclopedia area. Just make sure to throw out this arc folder because any excess folders in here could screw things up. Now that I did that, go back to user ABE map and go into Zukon. From here, open the folder of the area that you replaced and copy the root.txt file and then go back and paste it into the area of your choice. And make sure to overwrite the old one. And there you go. Anyway. These are the text files that define all the objects in the overworld. The default gen.txt has things such as the ship where captains spawn, the onions and pikmin spawners under the onions, as well as the caves. As you can see, tutorial 1. That is the emergence cave. Init gen has things like walls, bridges, and paper bags, as well as all the treasures that are not inside enemies. As you can see, these, these are some treasure names right here. Plants Gen has, well, plants. These don't really show up on Notepad++, but it, it has plants. And Route.txt has the definition for how Pikmin carry objects. In the loop and non-loop folders, you will find more generation files with, that have numbers on them. For example, 0 to 1 would have enemies that spawn on day 1 only, and 1 to 2 have 1, they was 1 and 2, etc. The generation files in the loop folder will loop every 30 days, as you can see, 30 to 39, and then it ends at 59, so. And the generation files in the non-loop folder won't loop at all. In order to edit these, you can edit the f text files directly, but in order to set up a new entity, Yoshi2's gen editor can help, as well as the Pikmin 2 technical knowledge base. This page has all the different entity identifiers including enemies, plants, caves, and treasure. And this page has the generation file syntax information. So let's go through that. First, at the top of every generator file, you'll see this header. Most of this stuff isn't that useful. Like start posts according to the TKB doesn't do anything. The thing you have to worry about though is this number. In the case of default gen, this is 9. This means that there are nine generators in this file. If the number is different from the number of generators in the file, the game will crash. So it's really important that you keep this the same. Next, we get onto the actual generator itself. Starting from the top, we have version, which is debug stuff, so not worth changing. Then there's reserved. Basically, if it's set to zero, the entity will only load once. There's Japanese characters here. This just means how many days it'll take to respawn. Zero means it will respawn whenever the area is loaded, including exiting a cave. Next, this long string of numbers doesn't do anything, so probably just more debug stuff. 
Then, there are these three sets of numbers, with POS next to it. These numbers are the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the entity. You can, in order to get these, you could easily guess and check based on what's around, but there is a method of obtaining these more accurately, which I will show you in a minute. Just make sure that when you are editing these, there are exactly six digits after the decimal point. Underneath that is the offset, which moves the entity by a specified amount. Again, just make sure you have eight digits after the decimal place, and it moves it relative to the actual position. Finally is the entity class, which defines what type of entity it is. Pikmin TKB has you covered on the specifics of that. For enemies, or techies, as the game describes them as, the list goes as follows. Next to the class is the enemy ID. Now this can be found from this page, which will be linked in the description. I will set it, let's just say, I don't know, I want an, a hairy bulborb. So a hairy bulborb is enemy 43, so I'll change this to 43. Techie birth type determines how the enemy spawns. Zero is for spawning normally, and one is for spawning from the sky. So yeah, let's do that. Techie number it determines how many entities will spawn in that location. In this case, I'll just leave it at two. Face direction is the angle from the positive x-axis that the entity is facing. Now, really this you should probably get guess and check for, but I'll just leave it at 287. Zero point one circle relates to techie num in that it will only spawn multiple entities if the value is more than two. So if it's two, it'll spawn the multiple ones. Well, the radius that the enemy can spawn around the coordinates. If this is zero, it'll spawn exactly on those coordinates. Enemy size says it's unknown on the TKB, but if I were to guess, maybe, just maybe, it could control the enemy size. But I'm just gonna leave it at zero. This jumble of Japanese characters is the ID of the treasure to drop. If you don't want the enemy to drop a treasure, just choose zero. But in order to make it drop one, you'll need to add 768 to the treasure ID, which is this, and if you want it to drop an exploration kit treasure, you'll have to add 1024 to the treasure ID. So if you wanted it to drop, say, the amplified amplifier, you'd have to do 2 plus 1024, which is 1026. I'm just going to leave it at zero. Just keep in mind that not all entities will drop a treasure when killed. Next, pellet color is the color of pellet that the enemy will drop. Zero is for blue, one is for red, two is for yellow, and three is for random. So I'll just keep three. Pellet size is the size of the pellet it can drop. It could be either one, five, ten, or twenty. The first pellet min and pellet max are the minimum and maximum number of pellets that the enemy can drop, respectively. The second pellet min is the percentage chance of dropping a pellet, where one is 100% and zero is zero percent. So I'm just gonna change this to 0.05 for five percent chance. Now that is all that you need to consider for enemies, but there is some more stuff for pellets and they could be omitted if you're just doing an enemy and not a pellet pose. Pellet type is just like the pellet color from above. It works the exact same, except three means cycling between the color, which apparently crashes if none of the three primary Pikmin types have been unlocked. Pellet size behaves the same as the first one up here, but it's just the pellet that it contains. Incidentally, pellet posies can drop treasures and other pellets when they're killed, so I'm gonna set pellet min to one, just so we can see what happens. Finally is size. Now this is the state of growth that the pellet posy is in when it's loaded. Zero being a sprout, one is a taller sprout, and two is completely grown. Now if I were to go through all of the different things to load, we'd be here all day. However, there is a program that helps with creating these generators, and it's Yoshi2's Gen Editor, as well as the Pikmin TKB, which has all the information on the syntax. So when we open up the Gen Editor, we have this interface. In order to load the area, click Geometry, Load Grid.bin, Navigate to your root, user, Kando, map, and choose your area. In this case, I'll just do tutorial again. And then open up texts.szs. 
and here is the area in the gen editor. Then to open your generator file, click file, load, and choose the generator file you want. I will choose init gen. Now here are all of the generators that will be loaded. Now you can see some of these are out of place because this is a Piclopedia area and none of these have been calibrated to work with this area. To zoom in and out, use the scroll wheel and to move around, use the WSDA keys, so WSDA. And if you press shift, it'll move faster. In order to add a new object, click add object and choose what object you want to add. I'll choose an electric gate. The program will generate the text needed to insert into the file. Now, using the Pikmin TKB, the only parameter that we can edit is the gate's health. It's these Japanese characters. So, here they are, and it's already preset to 1600. I'll set it to 1000. To choose the coordinates, in the bottom left corner of the window, the coordinates are shown. So, I'll copy those into the text by right-clicking, clicking Copy Coordinates. And replacing these, the rotation acts like coordinates, except their angles. So I'll just make something up. And there you go. An electric gate in the valley repose. Now in order to put this in, you copy it and paste it into init gem. Doesn't matter where. I'll just go at the end. Then at the end you do control V. Now just as a side note, anything beside these hashtags doesn't affect the code. So I could just do this and it wouldn't matter. Then remember to change this to 36 generators. Keep in mind this number doesn't actually affect it, but I find it's always good to change it just so you know exactly what's going on. Then control S, save it, and close this, close this. The next thing I'll show you how to do is edit Louis' start position. There is this handy tool which will do it for you. All you need is the coordinates. It's called Louis Start Position Editor. You open it up, you import your executable. In my case, I have a PAL version. See root system data start.doll. Open it, and here is the start position. So I will get the position and find the coordinates for Louis to fall onto. In this case, it'll be 1146, 2666. So edit that, click File, Save, and now Louis will fall at a different spot. Finally, a very important aspect of the game, the route file. These you should edit if you change the location of any onions or the ship or put treasures in places where Pikmin don't normally go, and especially if you're using the Piclopedia areas. In order to edit this easily, Open up Yoshi 2's route editor. It comes with the gen editor if you're confused. Click on collision, click on load grid.bin, and navigate to the same folder. It should automatically open up. If not, same folder as last time. Click on text.scs and click open. And as you can see, here's the collision again. You can either make a new route file or import one from the game by going to file, open, or load. Navigating to the route.txt file, in this case it's an Abe Matt tutorial, and here it is, root.txt, open it up, and here's this mess. To edit this, you can either click on a waypoint, shown as a circle with a box inside, and change its coordinates, shown by the first three numbers, and the radius, shown by the last, or by clicking add waypoint, and right clicking. When making a waypoint, always ground it by clicking ground waypoint. In order for the waypoint to be useful, you have to click connect waypoint and click on the waypoint you just made it edited and then click on a waypoint next to it that you want to connect to it. The green arrow shows the direction Pikmin will go while carrying things back. They only go one way, so in order to make Pikmin walk both ways, you also click the one that you originally started at. As you can see, this one has green arrows going in both directions. So if, if for some reason their Pikmin want to carry it over here, they can go from this waypoint to this waypoint. Now this is a network thing, so all of the other waypoints have to be webbed together in some meaningful way in order for this to work properly. In order to save, do Control S, or you could do File Save. Now go rebuild your ROM and test it out in-game. Just a word of advice, if stuff doesn't work, 
make sure you save everything. <laughs> as you can see, if we open up the ROM, it should all be there. As you can see, there it is. There's a Harry Bulbor. There should be another one. Somewhere around this area. There it is. And the first day, Pickle can't die. So I'll just, I'll just leave. As you can see, there's our electric gate. It should even appear in the cutscene. Yep. And one of these pellets, I think it's this drop even more pellets. See? There we go. And as you can see, this electric gate is real. So now we're soft locked. Don't do that, kids. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next time.